Hi guys, so Arlen Foster, who is the leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, the DUP, and also the First Minister of Northern Ireland, dismissed a poll that was carried out by the Sunday Times as just an internet poll. But this uh, this poll was um, showed a small majority of people in Northern Ireland who are supportive of a border poll. Now, the border poll does not mean that uh, a majority of people support joining a united, uh, forming a, a united Ireland or remaining as part of the UK, but it's just a poll. But she dismissed that and said it's just an internet poll. And she also said, look, it's important that we stop talking about things like this and focus just on the pandemic. Now, this is a little bit hypocritical of her and the DUP, and I will come to that later. So let's hear what she said about all of this. In terms of this poll, this must have you worried, surely? Well, I think, first of all, we have to remember that this is a, an internet poll, so that always comes uh, with a health warning. But whatever about that, uh, I think it is very disappointing to see that some nationalist parties across the United Kingdom, during a time of national crisis, when I'm focusing every... Uh, working hour on trying to save lives are actually trying to uh, take this opportunity to talk about constitutional politics. Now, isn't this interesting how she's saying, look, we, you know, we have these parties in Northern Ireland who are focusing not on the pandemic, but on constitutional change. Isn't it somewhat of a parallel to what's happening in Scotland, where you have um, members of the Conservative Party in Scotland and outside Scotland saying this is not the time to talk about an independence vote. You should be focusing on the pandemic. Now, why are they saying that? Why would Boris Johnson be saying we don't want, you know, the Scottish people don't want a second referendum. Uh, it's not the time for it. We need to focus on the pandemic. It's because they're afraid they would lose. If you're, if you're confident that you would win, then you would say, bring it on. We want it so that we can put, the other, put this issue to bed for another number of years. Jacob Rees-Mogg, Boris Johnson are extremely afraid of a second referendum in Scotland. Eileen Foster maybe is not as afraid, but she is concerned about a border poll in Northern Ireland. Why is that? Because, well, because the DUP have always been on the wrong side of history. They were on the wrong side when it came to the Good Friday Agreement. They campaigned and voted against it although the majority of people in Northern Ireland are supportive of the Good Friday Agreement and their support continues to increase. They were also on the wrong side when it came to Brexit. They, were camp they campaigned for Brexit. They're su they were supportive of Brexit. I don't know what Arlene Foster thinks today, but she has been demonstrated to be in the wrong place because the majority of people in Northern Ireland voted to remain in the European Union and continue to support uh, the idea of rejoining the European Union. They're not supportive of Brexit. The DUP are, but they're not representative of the people of Northern Ireland. They are representative of a small amount of people, small section of, the, of society, but not the people as a whole. So she's afraid of a border poll because she knows that Brexit is extremely toxic and her party is aligned with Brexit and they can't really get away from that. They created this problem. They supported this problem. And in a way, they are part of the architects of this because if they hadn't lent their support to Theresa May before Boris Johnson came along, perhaps we wouldn't be looking at this mess today. But that's just a hypothetical. I mean, we all know how divisive a border poll would be. And for us in Northern Ireland, what we have to do at the moment is all come together to fight against COVID and not be distracted by what would be absolutely reckless at this time. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about COVID in, in just a moment. But in terms of it being divisive, I mean, it, is it really? I mean, the long-standing rule has always been, hasn't it, that if a majority of people wanted a referendum, then a referendum would happen. <laughs> I love the way that he just batted away her response there. Yeah, yeah, Eileen, you're just talking crap. <laughs> because this is not divisive. This is part of the Good Friday Agreement. Now, remember, the DUP were against the Good Friday Agreement. They're still against the Good Friday Agreement, although they will try to use it whenever they can to say, the Good Friday Agreement is, is threatened by... Um, is, is threatened by us being part of the EU or some sort of crap like that. Um, <laughs> this is part of, the border poll is part of the Good Friday Agreement. And it's ver a very important part of the Good Friday Agreement is also consent. 
if the people of Northern Ireland vote and support becoming part of a united Ireland, that should be respected. If the people of Northern Ireland would prefer to be part of the UK, that should be respected. Why does, why does um, Ireland Foster have a problem with that? You can imagine. Uh, are you dead against that now? No, it's not that I'm dead against it. I can argue for a United Kingdom every day of the week. <laughs> Notice the Weasley language she uses. It's not that I'm dead against it. Of course she's dead against it because she knows it would probably lose. Now, I don't think it would lose. She probably thinks it would lose. Otherwise, she would be saying, yeah, I don't have a problem with a border poll. Bring it on. You know, if the, I'm pretty sure the people of Northern Ireland would prefer to remain part of the UK. Um, that would have been probably the case a year ago or maybe even longer than that before this, the Brexit referendum. The people of Northern Ireland are starting to see, wait a minute, we didn't vote for this and we're being punished for it. England and Wales are punishing Northern Ireland for voting uh, even though it voted to remain in the European Union. The people of Northern Ireland don't feel happy about that. Boris Johnson was over in Belfast meeting with the DUP and throwing them under a bus when he was saying, yeah, no, don't worry, there will be no checks on the border. Everything will be frictionless. And that's not the case. The DUP hooked their wagon to Boris Johnson and he lied to them because, of course, the arguments are rational, they're logical, and they will win through. And, I mean, nobody's suggesting, and not even this poll is suggesting, uh, that uh, we would lose in that uh, if there was a border poll. But, of course, it would be incredibly divisive. And I think most people in Northern Ireland want us to deal with what's in front of us at present. And, of course, what's in front of us is dealing with a pandemic. OK, so she said, look, stop talking about this border poll. We should focus just on this one issue. Now, I want to show you this video from... Uh, the 2nd of June 2020, and this this took place in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Now, this is like the Parliament in Northern Ireland. And a motion was presented where uh, uh, this motion was to extend the withdrawal agreement, the, the withdrawal uh, transition period, sorry, f for Brexit. So, you know, the Northern Ireland, the people of Northern Ireland, they said, look, we want to extend the Brexit transition period in order to deal with the pandemic because it doesn't make sense to fight two battles at the one time. Maybe we should extend the transition period, focus on the pandemic, and then deal with Brexit after that. There's nothing about stopping Brexit, but one person in particular was quite angry about this, and he was completely against the idea of not fighting two battles at the one time. You can imagine which party he's from. The principal speaker, Sir Francis Bacon, once said, Reading make of a broad man, speaking a ready man, writing an exact man. And I've, of course that forces you to read what people have written. And in doing so gives you a sense of where are they really coming from. And despite all the words that we have seen both in the motion and in the amendment, it brings us back to one salient point that there are those who are still opposed to us leaving the undemocratic and over-bureaucratic European Union. <laughs> undemocratic, over-bureaucratic European Union. Now remember back on this day, on the 2nd of June 2020, it was possible to move goods across the border into the European Union without any restrictions. Now there are restrictions. Now there's bureaucracy. Now there's red tape. Mervyn is from the DUP, if you haven't already guessed. And he voted for Brexit. And now he's complaining that the other parties in Northern Ireland want to convince Boris Johnson's government to extend the Brexit transition period in order to deal with the pandemic. And they will stop at nothing to overturn the democratic decision of the people of the United Kingdom over four years ago to leave the European Union. In this motion today and in the amendment, they have decided to employ the current COVID-19 crisis and to use it 
as a mask to cover their real intention, and that is to deny the democratic wish of the UK exercised through the ballot box. Now, it's ironic because this is on the 2nd of June. The UK was no longer a member of the European Union. So either Mervyn doesn't understand Brexit or he's pretending not to understand Brexit. Either way, the UK was no longer a member of the European Union. It left on the 1st of February, the end of January, if you want to say. Um, at this stage, it was not a member of the European Union. So there was nothing being undone here. This was about extending the Brexit transition period in order to deal with the pandemic. And the DUP response was, no, we can do with both of these at the same time. We can fight two fires at the same time. While Eileen Foster was saying before, no, 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 we should be focusing on, on the pandemic, not on other issues. So I imagine most people know that the DUP are hypocritical, um, but I think it's important to point it out. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?